one of the things, so what's kind of been neat about this is if you remember during Lent, we did a huge uh, supply drive and we ended up, we had people give monetary gifts. We were able, we took, I mean, a check for, I don't know, just make up a number, $50,000. I don't know. <laughs> no, we took a check over there that was incredibly generous and then a bunch of supplies to help out. And, and that's exactly what Preston was working on when he put those bags together and, and moved those up. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Preston. See you guys. They'll be, they're going to get ready for the next service. And so, uh, and then the other thing I'll say, just a final, if you have ever driven by Wings during kind of the fall season is they have their fall festival. They sell, uh, I thought I dropped something. I apologize. They also sell pumpkins. And so in this room, if you buy your pumpkins from somewhere else other than Wings, you don't care about wings. And so <laughs> seems pretty clear. I'm just kidding. But don't buy them at Lowe's, buy them at wings. How about that? Is that good enough? I know there's other good agencies that do that as well. So I want to just take a few minutes and wrap up Faith Promise for us this morning. And I want to start by just reading a passage. I just You can stay seated right where you are. This is from 1 John chapter 3. And I'll be reading verses really 18 through 24. And so let us hear the word of God together. Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this, we will know that we are out of the truth and will convince our conscience in his presence. That if our conscience condemns us, that God is greater than our conscience and knows all things. Dear friends, if our conscience does not condemn us, we have confidence in the presence of God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing to him. Now this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and we love one another just as he gave us the commandment. And the person who keeps this commandments resides in God and God in him. Now, we, now by this we know that God resides in us by the spirit he's given us. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God said. Thanks be to God. So when I do marriage counseling or pre-marriage counseling with couples is one of the things we talk about, and you're probably familiar with this, is what we call the five love languages. Gary Chapman wrote a book. I mean, this book predates high school for me. I remember stumbling upon it when I thought I knew what love was as a 16 or 17 year old. And there are these five love languages that he defines. And and for some of you in this room, is, is you're fortunate enough to have all five of these as your primary love language. But for many of you, one or two of them rise to the top. Those five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, physical touch, and then acts of service. And these are ways that we receive love as husbands and wives, or really as people. As some of you would prefer not to be told that you're appreciated, but to be shown that you're appreciated by setting apart special moments throughout your week or your month or your year to be with the person that you love or the people that you love. One of the things I've started to realize in my own marriage is my wife is one of the few people in the world that has all five of these at 100%. And so, <laughs> but in actuality, her favorite is probably quality time or her most connected love language is quality time. And, and so what I had to do early on in my marriage is I had to set a reminder. So every few weeks or month, I have a little reminder that pops up on my iPhone that says, plan a date night. Plan a date night. And I encourage couples. I said, once you figure out what your primary love languages are, you need to figure out a plan on how to consistently speak love towards your partner in that way. So if it's words of affirmation, I say this often, is we don't grow or move forward without intention except for in our waistline, right? It's the only place in our lives where we grow unintentionally, but growth more than often, or more often than not, comes by intentional steps forward. So we say that when it comes to quality time or gifts or physical touch or acts of service, is, is although some of it comes natural, um, often we have to take the necessary step to move forward in that direction. And I mention these love languages because what I believe about God is that God is love. 
And so most of our understanding of romantic love, uh, even though in our world it's often very confused, and really I believe that the word love has been cheapened dramatically in our world, but I do believe that when we find love in its pure and good form, is that we see God in the midst of it. That's why I believe that God uses the relationship between a husband and a wife as an example of his relationship with us. Because God is love. And so I wanted to answer the question, what are God's primary love languages? What are God's primary love languages? Now you may be going through your head those five different love languages I talked about, and I'm just letting you know I cheated. We're not using those five. But as I've studied scripture and I thought about this series and wrapping it up, I started to think about what are the two primary ways that God receives love from his people? And the first one is faithfulness. Faithfulness. If we look at the story of the Old Testament, look into the story of the New Testament, we see the expectation for the local church is one of the primary ways that we show our love of God and neighbor is to be faithful to God. This is that devotional practice. It's that stuff we talk about when it's abiding in the presence of Jesus. It's the stuff we talk about when we give space in our lives for the Holy Spirit to make us new. It's that pursuit of holiness that we partake in as the Holy Spirit enters into our life is one of God's love languages is that we would obey him and that we would live in faithfulness in connection to the heart of God. And so that's one of the way that God receives love from his people is that we would be faithful to him. And the second one, and this is where faith promise really ties in, is I would say the second primary love language of God. And I would say that God appreciates quality time. I think that there are times in the scripture when God welcomes and receives gifts or sacrifices to use more biblical language as part of his love language. The physical touch one I tried to get into and I was like, it's more that he expresses his love through physical touch when he came in the person of Jesus to be with us. And obviously, he came to serve. And so Jesus Christ obviously fulfills all five of those. But I would say the, the second one that actually is outside of the list, that is one of the other ways that God receives love, is when the people of God take seriously the call to be people of mercy and compassion. To see a need in the world and to meet that need. And we see that story in the birth and founding of wings is there's a need for adults with disabilities to have a space where they can grow in skills and ultimately have a space and an opportunity for them to live with as much independence as they possibly can. And so a group of people got together and God planted a dream in their heart. They started this mission. And you go back through the last three weeks, Travis and Bonnie, as they shared about Guatemala, and Bonnie bringing the message of bringing actual, literal light to where there is darkness. The story of Hope is Alive, where addicts and alcoholics find healing and hope through the ministry of Hope is Alive. And then last week, hearing how Skyline started many, many years ago, is living out this active love of God for the neighbors in Oklahoma City. All of these are expressions of one of the two primary love languages of God. God values our faithfulness. He values our devotional practices. He values our abiding in him. But he also receives love by the way that we love others. He receives love by the way that we live out his love in the world around us. One of the things I've come to realize as part of my job as a pastor is, is the Lord has blessed the vast majority of us. And those gifts are financial, and those gifts are uh, the resource that is your being, your heart, your hands, your feet. But what I've also seen in the church, Church Universal, is we only emphasize 
the financial side of that. Yeah, God wants you to give your money. I believe that f- completely, and we would love for you to continue to do that. But God also wants your whole entire being. He wants every part of you to be poured out for the world, for his kingdom come. And so faith promises that opportunity we give you. Because even though many of us, if not all of us, are blessed, sometimes we don't see the opportunity to use our blessedness to be a blessing to others. So that's what faith promise is. We've been doing faith promise far before I came here. I've been here now 12 years. Far before I came here on staff, we've been doing faith promise. Doug Burr, who's back in the back, has preached one of our faith promise Sundays. It's one of the ways that we've said, we know that God has given us above and beyond, and we're going to take that money, and we're going to donate it to the church, and through the church, it's going to go directly into the world. Every dollar you promise, every dollar you give over the next year, none of it goes to nuts and bolts of the church. None of it goes to a staff salary here. Every single dollar that you promise goes directly into ministries and missions around the world. We have missionaries in Albania and England. We've supported missionaries in India. We've got people we send to Guatemala. I know our students just came back from St. Louis and a mission trip there. And often what will happen is through faith promise dollars, that'll go to help them lower the cost for the students that are able to go. The reach of this church is tremendous. And there's part of us in the middle of this is we can say, man, God, you are so good. Thank you so much. And this is enough. But I feel like we all know that God is a God of abundance. And so God wants you to know today is maybe you feel comfortable giving this. But but God is a God of abundance. So maybe the push for you is to give this. Maybe for you is... There's part of your heart that's like, yeah, I'll go to Pepper's Ranch next Saturday and serve for Serve Saturday. But maybe God is putting in your heart that there's a ministry or a mission that's out there that, that you're going to start or you're going to fund. I don't know what it is, but I know that God wants to use his church to make a difference in the world. Amen. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, early on. You are the salt of the earth. If salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's not good for anything except for be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. As a city on the hill cannot be hidden, neither do people take that light and place it under a bowl, but instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the room. And then what does he say? So let your light shine so that people might see your good deeds and give glory to God. So faith promises that opportunity for you today. And I know for many of you in the room, faith promise is a very foreign concept. We hopefully over the last four weeks have given you kind of an understanding of that. And just to give you, I would love to talk for you for way longer on this. We actually have two uh, kind of avenues that we give missionally. We're supporting wings financially as a church through our general budget. And so ultimately, we're giving, I think, $60,000 through our general budget into different ministries and missions. And I could label those off for you another day when I was thinking about this. And then we give between seventy dollars and $90,000 through Faith Promise. So over the course of a year, we're giving away $140,000 to $150,000 directly into missionaries, missions, and nonprofits that are changing the world in the name of Jesus. And that... Worthy. It's worth, yeah. I, it, is, it is worthy of celebration, but also it's, I think it's the beginning of what God wants to do in and through New Covenant for the world. Amen? So we're going to give you an opportunity to make your promise today. And, and we're going to do this is we're going to sing a song. We're going to play the piano a little bit whenever we're done singing. And if you have your faith promise card and you're ready to make that commitment, there are baskets. Jim, hold that up for us. Everybody give it up for Jim. What a wonderful job. Jim's going to be there uh, standing next to it, but he's not going to look at it, okay? So bring your faith promise up to those baskets, one at each table. I do encourage you, our friends from Wings have set up a table out here in the foyer. Go and say hi to them. Learn about what they're doing and find out a way to get involved with them and any of the ministries we love to connect you with as part of our time here. And so if you are ready, will you all stand as you're able and let us